I'm going to collapse the list using Control L and then go down to the ventilation design flow rate uh, class. And you'll see that right now I've got the um, fresh air ventilation on the um, fresh air ventilation by area on, and I've got this exhaust ventilation off. And then if I go down to the next class, got my cross ventilation on for two objects. So for this next um, this next um, study, I'd like you to save this file. I'm going to save this as 22 no HVAC no vents ventilation, and I'm going to turn off my ventilation, my my uh, cross ventilation. I'm also going to make sure that my this exhaust ventilation is off, which it is. I'm going to leave on these. Um, fresh air ventilation because they're they're small and they're they're required by code. So I'm just going to save that file now and run it. And and I've got this simulation. I'm going to open the variables and copy them into my file. And the point of this exercise is to see when there might be times when it's just changed a little bit, some temperatures went up, but for the most part I'm experiencing a lot of overheating here. And the point of this exercise is to see when I might have um, the possibility of natural ventilation and when either temperatures or humidity levels are likely to be too high. So this is just the first step. This is an unrealistic run because I've really minimized or eliminated most of the ventilation through the, through the zone and I've created kind of a greenhouse. This graph here shows humidity when overheating and what it means is that uh, it's reporting every time, every hour of the year when you're getting yellow above comfort in this graph. It's reporting it here. And the size of the dot is the degree of overheating that you're getting. The color of the dot is the outside humidity level. So when you have very, very high humidity uh, and high temperature, you can experience discomfort as well. What I'd like you to do is identify the times when you have high humidity and high temperature together and create a little map or a schedule that shows uh, when those times could be problematic. Uh, the, the best way to do this is to output these graphs and I'm going to do that by printing them to PDF. I'm going to print the active sheets like so. And these will take a little while to, uh, to output depending on your, your uh, computer speed. And that PDF will be about nine pages. Well, it should be exactly nine pages because what it's doing is outputting the entire, uh, all the graphs on that page. So you see heating and cooling, lighting, equipment, fan, process, hot water. We're not worried about any of these. Then it's got a few blank pages. And then now these are the ones that we want. Thermal autonomy, humidity, airflow, export to image. And then it will automatically export all of the images on the page. So I'm going to drop the thermal autonomy and humidity um, graphs in. I'm going to select them both and press Control G, and this way they're grouped together. And using Control Shift, I can proportionally scale them together. And now Control Shift G will ungroup them. I can move one underneath the other and align them. Now they're they're perfectly aligned. And now I want to crop. So I just have the important information. Uh, these two graphs here and I can now scale them to the the space. I might crop this a little bit more. Okay, so the important thing then the important thing is to annotate when you have high humidity and so ventilation probably isn't a great idea and I'm going to use uh, a new layer. I'm going to rename this um, notes and 
I'm going to outline for myself using the rectangle tool when that occurs. Now the, the largest, the most of that um, overheating is happening in this zone here. And this is when most of my natural ventilation would be desirable if, if it wasn't too humid. I'm going to make this a curved, rounded, and I'm going to make this dashed. I'm going to press Alt while moving it to copy that. And if I look at this uh, a similar area here, what I see is that there's probably an area here from March to June that is lower humidity here. And then an area here from September to November that is lower humidity. Whoops, I meant to copy that and I didn't. This time right in, in here. Now there there is some high humidity there. Um, and there's actually some lower humidity here, but I don't want to create a schedule that's too complex here. So what this is showing is that the, the blue is, the, the sort of darker blue is between 70 and 80% relative humidity. That can be still pretty humid. The purple is above 80% humidity, which is going to be real humid. And you might also keep in mind that, as you know, the uh, at night when the sun goes down, temperatures generally cool off, but the humidity ratio increases because the cold air can hold less humidity. And so this will show very high humidity levels in the nighttime. Those can still be sometimes comfortable times. Uh, so like if the temperature outside is 15 degrees and 80% humidity, it can still be uh, comfortable and a good time to uh, open windows to ventilate. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave this, uh, these two periods here and then notate what they are. So this is about 8 o'clock to, let's say, 6 o'clock, um, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. from March 15th to, let's say, May 15th. And then... The other period I see here is from September to mid-October from, say, the same, generally speaking, the same um, times of day, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. from September 1st to October 15th. So that's step one in the process. The next step is to schedule these um, times for your natural ventilation to occur.